Hey guys, good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you're receiving this transmission. Tis I, Mike Martins. It's been an interesting day for me today in the family. Did a lot of driving today too. <clears throat> Anyways, I've been uh, talking about um, Exodus is from California, Vancouver. Douglas Todd wrote a very interesting article, a very interesting eye-opening article. Let me bring it up for you guys. I bring it up every time, but it's very important. Mm, he's a really, Douglas Todd, writes a lot of good articles. And, um, very informative when it comes to um, explaining what is happening on the forefront. So this is what's happening in Vancouver. So this is very important you guys understand what's going on down in Sydney. Okay, guys? Aboriginals and whites leaving Metro Vancouver. I'll get to the point. A net total of 9,345 whites and 460 indigenous people left Metro, left Metro for the other parts of the province in one year period ending ending July 2016 according to newly released statistics Canada I am one of those in that statistics I am one of those and mass exodus California seeing a mass exodus Eight hundred thousand people. Wow, people are fleeing New York. Wow, even the see the big expensive cities. Mass exodus of right here. Mass exodus of re residents. California mass exodus lower cost states to escape the high tax. Mass exodus from states run by top Democratic uh, governors. Finally, California exodus begin to rush Limbaugh. So it's happening, guys. California is is seeing it. Uh, London. A lot of people are moving to Middle England, to UK cities. London's exodus offers a stark warning to other UK cities. UK cities outside of London need investment in people and culture, not real estate. That's friggin' right on the friggin' ball right there. Uh, what happens when we all get priced out of London? Is London facing a mass exodus? I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, now, so this is not a, even Toronto. I, even, I think that the city of Toronto. I grew up in Toronto. Mass Exodus 2018. Heard a lot of students too aren't coming anymore to study because of the cost of. Uh, the cost of um, living is stealing everything from us. It's actually taking our soul. It's it's we've we've gotten to a point now where money is the almighty. Now I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to tell people to be good. I'm just here to tell people. To stop just once in a while and take a look around because life moves way too fast and you're gonna be missing some of the best parts with the amount of greed there is out there for money and this this is this article is kind of touchy-feely lopsided city key reasons people are fleeing Sydney People are f fleeing Sydney for Melbourne. And there's a key reason that is near impossible for the city, for the harbor city to fix. Hmm. Let's see if this has uh, music in it. If it doesn't, I'll play for you. Yeah, it does. So we'll just leave it like this. Ah, here we go. So we'll play this from the beginning. I hope the... Um, 
the audio doesn't uh, so there's there's just music guys so it's writing okay and I'll read it for you guys it it can cost a fortune to buy a house in Australia so what does a million dollars actually get you Sydney median one million one hundred and sixty seven thousand one bedroom one bath no garage that's what you get for 961 large Melbourne medium 880 large South Bank 1 million two bedroom one bath Brisbane medium 551 large five bedroom three bath two car garage Adelaide medium 519 large zero beds one bath Perth medium 554 large 995,000 three bedroom two bath Darwin medium 593 large 1.1 million dollars 12 bedroom nine bath nine car garage Canterbury medium 723 large three bedrooms one bath one car parking Hobart medium five uh, bedroom three bath two car garage 980,000 which city, which city would you buy in? So, we're looking at ridiculous numbers, and I don't, I know, I know for sure, I know that the wages in, um, in uh, Australia have gotten better, but I don't think it's gotten better to a point where people could afford to buy these uh, basic homes. We're not looking at the Taj Mahal here, people. You know what I'm saying? And I bring this up in a lot of videos. We're not looking at a plantation, an estate, Bruce Manor, Wayne Manor. We're not looking at any of this stuff. You know, We're looking at a common home. What happens is the economy is suffering so much because no one's spending anymore or investing anymore because they're so focused on getting on this bandwagon to buy a house <sighs> let's close this here people are spending what they can or what they what they can't actually people are spending what they can't to live in a house and a lot of people are talking about these housing activists people and all these people you know even people call me oh what poor boy poor white boy wants a, a free house is that what you want poor white boy People don't want free houses. People just want fair housing. You know, people want f fair. It's just make it fair, adjust it to wages. I mean, I'm not asking to change water into wine. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, people are t tired of tossing salad. Anyways, there's no doubt that Sydneyers are fleeing the Harbor City. And an obvious reason for that is a stratosophic house prices. But Sydney's ge geography is also to blame, creating a double whammy of pain for residents. Australia Bureau of Statistics data released on Tuesday showed Sydney's population rose 2% in 2016 2017 to 5.1 million, an increase of 101,000 people. Hold on, guys. Somebody's calling. That is Anthony from The Walking Journey. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him back later. If you haven't checked out his channel, check him out. He's, he's a really good guy. I will talk to him in a bit. But I want to finish this here real quick. Australian Bureau Statistics data released. Okay, so population rose 2%, 5.1 million, an increase of 101,600 people. Now, here's the whole problem. I'm, I, I, I can't, you see, I, I can't compute this, right? So somebody in the comment section needs to heavily educate me. I know I can't read, so let's don't even go with that. But 5.1, so there was an increase of 101,000 people, 2%. How is that possible when Australia's, Australian proper aren't having kids anymore? Or they can't afford to, to have kids? And the birth rate's one of the most dangerous last five years in Australia. Someone needs to kind of help me or kind of show me you know why i'd like to know we're humans right and as humans we like to know things we like to 
explore and understand. You know what I'm saying? So. That was fueled by 85... Here we go. That was fueled by 85,000 overseas migrants. But more than 18,000 people abandoned Sydney, Sydney last year in contrast. Melbourne welcomed 9,000 newcomers from other states and territories. One of the key reasons is that Sydney has become Australia's lopsided city. Unlike every other capital whose CBDs are roughly in the center of the metropolitan area, central Sydney is located at the far eastern end. The western extreme of the city in Penrith is about 55 kilometers away. Head east and you'll fall into the sea of, at Bondi Beach, just nine clicks from the steps of the Opera House. Tyranny of Distance. Compounding the tyranny of distance that obtained by news.com.au has found Sydneyers looking to buy a home in the Sydney's medium house price range have to search further from the CBD than, Mel than Melburnians. <laughs> Only adding to the commuter misery for those working in the city centre. Western Sydney University Chair of Architect Chris Cap said the city CBD was one of the most beautiful in the world, but made it a greater Sydney, made it greater Sydney lopsided. If you're going to build in a city from scratch for 8 million people, you wouldn't build Sydney the way it is, Professor Cap told Musi. Well, it had to be built because of, because of ports and trading, right? It was a lot of ports. It's it, a lot of major cities are built off ports. Uh, that's my understanding, right? It's a lot of people commuting a very long distance to the business center. The Sydney CBD's exquisite geography placement on the harbor is wonderful once you get there. Many people also have to reach the CBD by only the harbor bridge and tunnel, which is logistically a nightmare. And there's a huge pressure on that kind of density. He compared Sydney to the challenges that plague San Francisco, New York, two cities whose centers concentrated to the end of the urban area with limited access to CBD. Vancouver's the same. You got the Vancouver on, on the coast, and then you got the mountains behind you, and then it's pretty much closed off. It's really hard, you know what I'm saying? According to property data analytics firm CoreLogic, the medium house price in Melbourne is 828720 Australian dollars. In Sydney, it's a whopping 1.033. Research from comparison website finder.com.au shows that Melbourne, a trip of about 25 kilometers is needed to find houses for sale around 800 large. That's about the distance from Federation Square in the city center, Altona, which takes half an hour by train. Holy smokes. Yet, yet aside, a few scattered suburbs to get the medium house price in Sydney generally means heading 35 clicks from, C, uh, from CBD. So here's the average house price in Sydney. Holy smokes. So zero to five clicks from the, the uh, capital, from downtown, would cost you 2.482 million. Holy smokes. And then zero to five clicks from Melbourne, 1.5 million. And guys, please, if you're tuning in or you're just watching this or skimming through, this is $2.482 million for, for nothing. This is for just the regular house, guys. So, like I said, this is not Wayne Manor here or the Taj Mahal. This is like an average house. Drive to a city suburb, and that's the house right there. Like that, that, That's it. That's the average house. So this is the median price, and this is where people are going for. So people are going 35 to 40 clicks and 30 to 35 clicks outside of Sydney, uh, from Sydney downtown. So 40 clicks, you're looking at under a million bucks, and 30 to 35 clicks, you're looking one point, a million, just over a million. And then for Melbourne, 35, 30 to 35 clicks outside the city, you're looking at 687 large. And then from 35 to 40 clicks outside of Melbourne, you're looking at 592 large. So this means that buying a house somewhere like 
Glenwood, close to Blacktown, in the city's west, Loftus in the south, at least 50 minutes log from CBD job. Meanwhile, properties within 15 to 20 kilometers CBD can be put about 40% cheaper in Melbourne and Sydney. So we saw that on the graph, right? It's clear that buyers in Melbourne are getting much better deal than those in Sydney, especially for those close to the hustle and bustle of the central business district finder.com AU insight manager Graham Cook said. Hard to argue with the math. So this goes into the distances here and geographic distances within how many homes are within that perimeter is a really long article. Sydney challenged. Unit prices are naturally cheaper across the board, but again, Melbourne beats Sydney about 30 kilometers from the CBD. Flats in Melbourne are 30% cheaper than New South Wales City. That goes into that. There's Central City, Eastern City, Western City. So this would be Manhattan, if you're watching this in New York, this would be Manhattan, this would be Midtown, and this would be Uptown, basically, is what it, what they're showing here. Sydney needs two new cities. Okay, this is what I was going to bring up, guys. So this is what it is. The only way to get out of this trap, this housing trap, I think, is just to build like crazy. Just like they did in Spain, till till everything collapses. Then this way, as they build and put more on the market, I have a feeling that things will start changing. And there's only so much, there's only so much, of, so many people could buy, right? There's only so many people on the planet. So, you know, I'm thinking to be really frank with you guys. I read an article a few weeks back about a family that left Sydney and headed out to um, a thousand clicks outside the city and bought a house for 90 or $105,000. And I was really happy to see that. Let, let me see if I could find this article. Sydney family uh, was a thousand kilometers to buy a home. I can't find it. Yeah, too bad. It's a really good article. If anyone could find the article for me, please leave it in the link below. You see a, a gentleman and his wife on the porch of their house, smiling. And, uh, you know, in, in Western culture, housing is, um, you know, very important. I think it was instilled by the Europeans when they were out exploring, right? I think it is instilled ownership, the king of the castle, your, your hiatus, your your sanctuary, you know? Sydney auction clearance rate drops below 60% as market turns. Let's see if this one has uh, audio on it. If, if it doesn't, if it does, then I'm gonna get my, my video flagged, so. Let's see if this one plays. See what they have to say here, but this is a becoming a very big deal. Good morning, and welcome to another domain live auction brought to you by Macquarie Bank. We're in ride this morning at an original condition home that's on the market for the first time. Live auction domain live auction brought to you by Macquarie Bank. We're in ride this morning at an original condition home that's on the market for the first time in more than 60 years. Two hundred thousand men, maybe to get us underway. I'm sure you'll all see the definite potential and the value of this particular property. One one eight zero. Well, let's start there. We're happy to start there. Well, let's give a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. One million one hundred eighty thousand is here with my gentleman on my left hand side. Bidder number fifty eight. One triple two is here on the left. We're selling. 
One million two hundred twenty-two thousand. Twenty-five, sir. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Yeah. Five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Good bidding, sir. Final time of one million two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. We're selling. Forty. Good bidding. Sir. First, second, third, and final time. Forty-two. Forty-two. All done. Absolutely positive, sir. I'll give you the count of three. How's that? At one million two hundred and forty-two thousand. First, second, third, and final time. You're absolutely positive, sir. Permission to sell it. Damien. Sold and well bought, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much, to all of All right, put the mic audio back on. Sorry, guys. So it sold for $1.242 million. Wow. Like, am I severely delusional? I got a lot of people telling me that in the comment section. Someone needs to... educate. Is this really worth $1.2 million? Like, am I really outside of my... Is this really worth 1.242 million Australian dollars? That's 1.242 million Canadian because we're on par with the US to, with the uh, with the with the Australian dollar. And that would be right there, that would be 900 988,000 US dollars roughly for that. I, I don't know what to say about like I really am I think somebody needs to, in the comment section, educate me why this is worth 1.242. Are people in Australia making like $460,000 a year and $380,000 a year? Because if interest rates go to 5%, you're looking at a lot to cover that. At 1.2 million, you're, you are looking at Jeez, man, you're looking at close to 70, 68 or $70,000 in finance charges a year. I'm not understanding. I'm not seeing how, like, is the land really worth that much to enslave? I, I, don't, I don't understand. So I need, I, need, I need to learn, guys. So maybe you guys could help me in the comment section. Uh, look, I... I did I just, was I under a rock for the last, what, six years? Is this the norm? Okay. Sydney auctions below 60% clear, 60% uh, as market turns. Sydney auction market Stumbled on Saturday with clearance rates dropping below 60%. Auctioneers across the city found themselves presiding over standoffs as prospective buyers ende endeavored to stare down vendors on asking prices. The, strate the strategic tension between the buyers and sellers was highlighted by a large number of pass-in neo-negotiated auction sales. Neo- Negotiated auction. The clearance rate of fifty-eight point one percent was the one was one of the lowest results of the year. It's got a graph here. Good. How Sydney auction market is performing? So it's dipping Q one. Okay, so this is showing us here revised clearance rate. Clearance rate percentage. So it's it's showing you how the market's performing and. Scheduled auctions. So it's showing you where the scheduled auctions are, and it's giving you an idea of. Oh, it gives you the entire breakdown of how many. So 700 scheduled auctions, 609 scheduled, 406, 670. I get it. I get it. I get it. The five-bedroom property attracted pre-registration from five families. Three of them made bids, pushing the home under the hammer price of 5.8 million which is up 700,000 on the 5.1 million reserve. Holy crap. Holy crap. 
My house is double the size and probably triple the land, and I paid two sixty dollars for it last year. Go ahead, laugh at me in the comment section. I don't care. Oh, well, you live in a small town. Wh whatever. I love it here. I get harassed here. It's the best. But... This is actually... People don't understand... How much of a big deal this is. People don't understand how much this is going to affect every Australian proper. Especially the ones that were in fear of being bought out. You have, you have no idea. The Australian proper is in for... It's going to affect every single one of them. Everybody. And I'm just saying this because I'm not trying to, you know, bring in fear porn. I'm just trying to say... I'm just not seeing anything normal here. I remember when people used to buy houses... Oh, it went up a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars after thirty years of owning it. Sell it, retire. People now are going into uh, retirement with a mortgage. It's going to be hard. It's going to be. Uh, times are changing, guys. Is this the new norm? Is this what I guess I have to? prepare my kids for? How do I prepare my kids for something along these lines? How do I, you know, tell them that you don't, you will never own a house? Not because you can't afford it. It's because I will be very upset if my kids spent $5 million on a house like this. smokes let's go to affordable pricing this is islands these are islands here i'm showing you guys let's go to can i go by zip uh, this goes right to the top refined search here we go okay we'll go million 1.25 we'll go to a max Oops, that's too high. Way too high. Way too high. Oh, that's way too high. Two million. Let's see if it updates it for me. Okay, it found six hundred and fifteen homes. So this is this is what you would what I would imagine when I see a home for that much money. This is two million. So we're. I'm not even going to compare that five million dollar house. I'm not even going to go to five million. I'm just going to show you. This is what I see. Look, this house has a plane in it. Go ahead, laugh at me. Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> Look at it from the top. Hold on. Let me see if I could. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, there's a top. This 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 is a two million dollar house, guys. And you could walk in there and say, I'll give you 1.7, that's all I got. You know? Marble floors. This is a two million dollar house. I I I I don't know if I'm in a different dimension seeing things. I really don't I'm not joking people. This is a $2 million house. This is not a five... I'm sorry whoever bought this house, but this is not $5.8 million. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I, I don't know, like... The thing is... Okay, 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 okay. If you have $5.8 million to spend on a house, that means you got money, right? It means you have a lot of money. Why the hell would you live there then when you could buy this for $2 million? I... I don't get it. Like, uh, is it? Uh, I, 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 I. I want to show you guys the plane. Hold on. Let me see if I can find the plane here. Oh, that's Brazil wood. Wow, 
That's Brazil wood, man. You don't see Brazil wood too often. It's very expensive. All the old homes in Portugal have Brazil wood. And when the house gets torn, they take all the hardwood flooring out, the Brazil wood, and resurface re re it and put it in other homes. Look at that. A kid's pool. <sighs> I'm not getting it, people. I want to show you the plane. The plane, boss. The plane. I swear to God there was a plane in the house. It's right on a golf course, too. Guys, I'm not kidding. Right there. There's a plane parked in there. There's a hangar in the house. There's a hangar right there. All right, I'm not making this up. So let's see what else you get. Oh, look at this one. Oh, this one's nice. Oh, I'm getting a lot of messages here. Look at this. Naples. I love Naples. I've been to Naples quite a few times. This is, this is a $2 million house. Okay, all right. If I'm gonna spend $2 million in a house, okay, and a poor boy can't afford a home in Vancouver. Poor white boy. Well, it's not that I don't wanna spend $2 million on a house. If I spend $2 million on a house, I'm buying that house. Someone keeps messaging me on Facebook and I don't know why. Oh, it's my wife. Oh, baby. She's just showing me uh, photos of my kids. That's a $2 million house, guys. I, I don't know what I could say. Or let's go into the next. The next. Let's see what this puppy has. Six baths, 7,000 square feet. It's got a grid. That's a grid, guys. That's for 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 hurricanes. It's it's just like it protects the uh, from leaves and stuff from coming or or bad winds. And I've been through like many hurricanes, and it's just a bunch of wind and rain, and you have hurricane parties. It's so good. I don't know what I'm seeing. Like I don't. Like, okay, all right, guys, listen to me. If you're in Sydney, and you have five point eight million dollars, why would you buy that home? When you could buy this for two million and buy a plane for a million, and go back and forth to Sydney if you really want to live in Australia, then you could have a home, a base. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm, you know, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna. I don't know. Wow, I have mural. Wow. See, I would spend two million on this, like this. Not a not a flip of up to put a huge down payment down, huge, and then just you know, it's going to the next house. Hold on. See, these are these homes are worth it. I I don't know. Look at this one. Oh, it's in Wellington. This is in Florida. It's a beautiful house in Wellington. 4,800 square feet, paying $416 per square foot. It's right on the golf course too, eh? The only thing is, I had a house on the golf course in um, Fort Lauderdale. The only problem is I had to replace a couple of headlights and taillights on my car from the golf balls coming over from the golf course and, and breaking my lights. Like, I'm not kidding, and a, windshield, and, a, and a cracked windshield too. That's the only thing about living on a golf course is that it's fine it's if you're living on a golf course you can have a cracked windshield it's not a big deal you know what i'm saying anyways guys it's me delusional mike i need to know what's going on here guys someone needs to fill me in is it because i've lived in so many different places speak a bunch of languages read and write is it what is it is am i seeing things because i've been like to like what 70 countries like is it is it because I've seen or, or maybe because I've been in there and done it. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to go out there and be like, yeah, I've seen it all. No, no, because I haven't. I'm learning. I'm learning every day. I'm trying to figure this damn thing out. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think if you're living down in uh, Sydney or Melbourne. I want to know what this what the hell is going on here. Thanks for watching.